Pierre Vaughan Radio, PO Box 195, Charlestown, New Navy. So give us a call. Our numbers are 1 869 469 1616 and 01700. Here's a suggestion you have a question or a comment, perhaps you can get a pencil, piece of paper, write it down so that you're well organized. And when you're getting on the show, you take as little time as possible so that we can accommodate as many of you as we can. We ask only, first of all, you respect yourselves and then respect others because we will not accept anything we deem that's not within our broadcast standards. But we encourage you to always be for, uh, forceful with your point. With glad to your participation in the show again, we encourage you to call in the num numbers listed. Also, you can follow us on our YouTube channel at Vaughn Radio and our Facebook page at Vaughn Radio for the video streaming of this show. Thank you all again. Your voice in the community thought that get results. Tonight, as promised, as we are heading to the polls in a general election for St. Kitts and Nevis, we have the date now, we have the date for nomination day, and one of the persons who is at the head of an organization which is very integral in the conduct of the elections. The supervisor of elections, Mr. Elvin Bailey. We're very pleased to have him this evening. Mr. Bailey, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Herbert. And it is so good to have you once more. I deem it very important to, um, for, for, yes, for, um, for you to inform us of the conduct going forward of the poll that's um, going to be happening shortly in, in just about two weeks or so. Um, let me take this opportunity, however, to first of all give you an opportunity to um, greet the audience, the listening public, and to make an opening comment. Well, thank you once again, Mr. Herbert, for having me here to give information about the upcoming elections. As you have indicated, nomination day is next week, Tuesday the 26th, Tuesday the 26th, and a nomination means that those who wish to uh, participate in the elections as candidates will have an opportunity to register, so to speak, to have their names put on the ballot. That registration requires that the person so interested must be nominated, recommended, if you wish, by two persons who live in the constituency, who are registered in the constituency. And um, that person will have to cough up $150 for registration. Now, that person, whosoever he or she is, having been nominated on Tuesday the 26th, will have a three-day period of cooling off in which they may change their minds. After that time, it's going forward with the person so nominated. Um, election day, as you've indicated, is on the 5th of August, Friday the 5th of August. And I think everybody understands what that means. They go to the polls at the places prescribed and they make the mark for the person of their choice. That mark really ought to be made in secret. It should not be public. But there are instances where people can request and have requested assistance, and that assistance is to be given. No one is to be denied the opportunity to make their choice because of circumstances beyond their control. Things like um, differentially abled persons, some, some persons are nervous, etc., etc. Those persons still have the right to vote and can, in fact, exercise that right. Um, in secret, with help, or open, and that is why we have the oath of the persons that they will not divulge the information that they glean at these stations. The persons who will be on the register who will be eligible to vote in this upcoming election are those persons who are properly registered up to May of this year. Properly registered means that they registered in May, they went through the process of, of being on the revised monthly list, uh, there were no objections made to them, and or if an objection was made and they would have cleared that objection, 
then they are eligible to vote. We anticipate that there will be in the region of 50,000 persons on that register. We don't have the absolute figure yet. We are still working on that. But um, we anticipate, as I said, that there will be in the region of 50,000 persons on that register, all of whom would have a right to vote. So, in a nutshell, that, that is where we are at at the moment. Nomination day, as I said, it's uh, Tuesday the 26th, voting day, or polling day as it is called, um, the 5th of August. And um, the voters list should have you on, on the region of 50,000 persons, and it will be available shortly for inspection. Uh, I want to also add at this point, uh, refer people to a website on which we have been publishing our information. And it's the only website that we have been sending information to. And that website is www.legal.gov.kn. And a little later on, I can repeat it for those who are tuning in late. But that is the website on which we are posting our information. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bailey. Um, so a couple of things I would like to um, ask, and uh, <coughs> let me just say to the general public, Mr. Bailey has um, agreed and afforded us perhaps the first hour, so he will not be here for the entire program. And thus, if you have a question you would like to ask of him, you can interrupt us even now and ask that question. I would ask some questions of my own, which I know some people would like to know, and um, I myself would like to know. But please, if you have a question to clarify something, um, you can call us on one eight six nine four six nine one six one six and or one seven zero zero. Now, <coughs> the idea is, as I had indicated, we had um, got, got Mr. Bailey here, the supervisor of election, because we've done a number of elections before. And if you were around as well, um, there have been a number of elections in the recent past when there has been a lot of acrimony surrounding the um, conduct of the elections, the voters list, the electoral office, and all that. I think it is fair to say that the last two or three elections we have had very minimal um, complaints. Of course, different persons have different views, but the, the, the fact in which I, I speak, we have the evidence here because we've been in the midst of a lot of, of this um, thing. And, and, and I, I must say, um, to be fair, that from since Mr. Bailey has been at that helm, we've had, we, we did not have a lot of that acrimony. Mr. Bailey, let me ask, for the record, how many elections have you supervised? I have supervised the, the Nevis Island um, elections in 2017, the federal elections in 2020, the by-election, um, um, again in Nevis. Um, so three in the, I took the office in 2015, so three within six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And there were some challenges coming out of the last federal elections, weren't there? They were. But uh, d were there any full hearing? I, I think there, there might have been one, but um, and then s one was withdrawn or something. How did that go? One went to before the judge, uh, but the petitioner, if that is the correct word, eventually withdrew the um, challenge. Mm -hmm. And so none of them went full distance. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of the, con um, the, the conduct of the election on election day and also leading up to the election, um, sometimes it's difficult to ask persons to do an assessment of themselves, but I'll ask you this way. How do you think that your team performed, the folks that you have 
um, you know, working for, you know, you have polling clerks, etc., etc., etc. And um, uh, af as, as you answer that question, perhaps you can um, follow up and tell us how um, you're doing with your polling clerks and all that. Well, in, in my opinion, really, the persons who stepped up to the plate and understand it, it's voluntary. It's very voluntary. But the people who have stepped up to the plate in the past have, in my mind, to my mind, done an excellent job. Um, of course, we go through periods of, of intense training. I have to go through what the legislation requires. They have to understand also what the legislation requires. I bring to bear the experiences that I have learned having observed elections in other places. And they also bring to bear, and I also do, because I've worked in elections from the poll clerk stage to the presiding officer stage to re the returning officer stage. That was a long time ago. But nothing much has changed in terms of the way we do elections. So I have those experiences to draw on. And there is a cadre of persons, really, who love this sort of thing. It's voluntary, yes, but they love this sort of thing. And they always look forward and come forward and volunteer their services. That is not to say there isn't a small um, stipend at the end of it, but essentially for the work that is involved, mm -hmm. it's it's a voluntary, it's a labor of love. The, the persons who do this work, um, A, who are they? And B, how are, uh, uh, how are they selected? When I say who are they, not necessarily to give the names, but, um, you know, people from the community, and are they selected by the politicians? Are they selected by the supervisor? How? They are selected by the supervisor. Um, we, we try to get, I try to get people who are upstanding persons in the community to work in the electoral process. People who are well respected bring a certain level of, of confidence to the process. They have been teachers, they have been public servants, they are, um, well, no ministers yet have come forward, um, nurses, <coughs> and so on. People who are accustomed to giving service in the community uh, are usually the persons who are in charge as the level of returning officer. The presiding officers, <coughs> we try to get, of course, uh, people who are of the same ilk, people who would be well respected. We emphasize, and I can't emphasize this enough, that it is not a, a, a time for people to have quarrels. When you are assigned, when you take up the responsibility, when you accept the challenge to be a, an election worker, we don't expect you to be quarreling with the voter who comes in the door, regardless of the situation they bring. You have to be professional at all times. And I am happy to say that thus far, we have had a high level of professionalism from the persons. Part of it is their own upbringing, the way they are, and part of it is from the training that uh, is done um, and, and the understanding that they have and, and the, the, the love, really, of doing this sort of work. The poll clerk really does recording. Everything that happens on polling day, in the polling station, is recorded. Usually, we go for the younger folks. Usually. Um, but not always. Uh, today, I had, for instance, uh, a lady who is in her 60s who came to the office and said, I would like to take part as a worker in this election. So yes, we have people from all levels and so on. I personally like to involve the young people because I think it is an opportunity for them to become involved in nation building at an early stage. I think this perhaps is very important because of sometimes perception. The um, electoral, that organization that conducts the election in which you are the head, has, based on the Constitution, um, a certain degree of independence. Yes. Um, and independence includes from not only the political parties and candidates, 
but from not not uh, the opposition and the government as well that is correct because i i think that 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 is important and let me ask you this and uh, you had mentioned earlier that you, in that position you have conducted um a few elections yes would you say that you've had the cooperation of those in authority whoever it might have been at that point in time that is a fair statement yes do you anticipate it going forward the same level of yes i i do but i i also need to mention uh, the the functioning of the electoral commission yes that three person right now three man um commission that is in that has uh, on membership that is nominated one person nominated by the opposition in the federal house one person nominated by the government in the federal house and the chairman who is um, appointed in the deliberate judgment of the governor general so they too have a role in in actually giving me instructions helping me to interpret the legislation and helping me over some of the challenges that may occur as we move forward so yes it is a fair statement that we are as independent as is possible given that whatever payment is to be made for the services comes out of the public purse are, are you comfortable now notwithstanding that it is i believe a given view most people hold the view and uh, to put very simply that this election is i would use a word a rough one it oh, is yes it, it, it's a rough one and, and, and when you have something which which it seems as though everything is at stake it, yes it, it gets basically rougher but notwithstanding with your experience and all that um even up at this point with the campaigns going very very you know harsh at each other and stuff like that and everybody make accusations and so on and who is going to be able to vote and so on are you feeling comfortable at this point in time that we're going to have a safe good free and fair elections from your vantage point i am comfortable and confident that we'll have a free and fair election okay well let's get into um some other questions so we're doing um the one of the things the important things that people always are concerned about you had indicated earlier i think folks are taking up the challenge i did say they can call early and ask questions because you're not going to hear so let me be a person to my word and take our first caller good evening thank you for holding uh good evening webo and good evening to your guests good evening the supervisor of elections i have one question for you Mr. Berry, and it is uh, the answer to which I believe would shed a lot of light on what is the acceptable mark that one can place on the ballot. I believe when one gets the ballot, they are advised by the clerk to make an X. But I think the the law says. A mark. So my question is, is it just an X that's acceptable, or could it be a check, or a cross, or any any clear mark? What is the legal position? What what, what is acceptable? That's my question. Okay. Th thank you. An interesting question, Mr. Bailey. Uh, the legislation. The St. Christopher and Nevis National Assembly Act, Chapter 2.01, actually describes it as a cross. However, case law has allowed for a mark to be made. The legislation requires a cross to be made in the space provided. The legislation goes on further to say where the intent of the voter is clear. The courts have ruled on what is a clear intent of a voter. 
we were about to to have that clarified again you mentioned earlier you asked earlier about the cases that emerged out of the 2020 election mm -hmm. we were about to have um, some clarity um, on the matter that went before the judge but as i said the matter was withdrawn before the judge actually gave a decision or was called upon to give a decision in the in the matter because in that election there were some rejected ballots in that um, case there were some rejected ballots that were rejected because they were ticks some were rejected because they were two ticks in the same box yes some were rejected because there were two x's in the same box mm. um some were rejected because there was a mark call it half a cross in the box i have seen instances where there is a dot i've seen ex uh, instances where there's a small circle what is not allowed is writing no writing you can also have a situation where the mark perfect mark is made by a pen that is not allowed okay let me just uh, take this good evening thank you for holding Hey, good evening. Good evening. I like to talk to Billy. Billy, Billy, Billy here. That's all right. I just realized today. This the new NRP. You can't do that, Mr. Cousin. Okay. Um, you know, Mr. Bailey, I. Let me go on to something else, right? No. What would you say? Because you, you did suggest that the legislation, I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, said that the clear indication of the voter. Yes. Um, we are accustomed to, I think most people, to say you must put an X mm -hmm. and you must stay within mm -hmm. the box. So to be clear and, and to be unambiguous so that people don't have any doubt about their intention, what would you suggest to persons? Stay within the, light, the box. And go with an X, perhaps? Go with a, an X or a cross. A, cr a cross is different from X, right? I well. <laughs> anyway, good evening. Thank you for holding. Hey. Okay, now that fellow, I had banned him for about a year, mm -hmm. and he obeyed. I lifted the ban, and then he comes again. So, for the public, you are banned again for another year. <laughs> you can always um, hail me as normal when we catch up on the road, and we can talk then. So, please don't call at this time. So, another year. Okay. So, I was saying, Mr. Bailey, so you, you would suggest to folks to be unambiguous, to let there no doubt about, try and make sure that you stay within the box, put an X. Put an X. Okay. But, you're also saying that if that doesn't happen, it doesn't mean that your vote will not count. It doesn't mean that your vote will not count. You see, I, I, and I always tell people, when I was going to school as a youngster, I was always told right on the line and now for this vote I'm told do not touch the line mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and it's it's for some people who and I don't mean this in any negative way who are not normally accustomed to writing the space provided on the ballot is never big enough yes so some people slip over when I voted the very first time I was those days you had to be 21 to vote and i voted for the first time and i was nervous so a lot of people for the first time voters there is a lot of nervousness that causes things to happen so we recognize this and and there's some leeway allowed in the law when it says where the intention of the voter is clear mm -hmm. the key thing is that this must be established up front early before the actual counting start that this is what we will accept this is what we will not accept and that is one of the critical roles of the returning officer who is doing the counting because the the, the idea is that 
the objective is to get everybody who is qualified and eligible to vote to vote to vote and to count that vote that vote okay now let's go to the voters id yes um what if your voters id is expired we encourage people to come to the office to get the newly minted issued voter id the voters id do have an expiry date however you can still vote even if your id is expired we will encourage you to bring another form of picture id that is not expired or in for the avoidance of doubt come to the office at any time during the day and get your card renewed you can vote the preferred um, identification is the national identification card also known as the voter id but any other form of picture id that is issued by the government is acceptable example social security card driver's license passport birth certificate because even though the birth certificate does not have on a picture we within the polling booth have a picture list so when the person stands in front of us we can um, eyeball the person look at the picture and see and this is one of the reasons to why the card has a life because as you age sometimes your features change but we have a picture id that we will use as a guide and if all else fails the voter can always take an oath of identity and be allowed to vote so um if it's important then that as we uh head into an election on the 5th of august that you even as we speak try and locate your voters id yes look where is that on the expiration date on the back on the back, on the back and see what the expiration date is and if ne needs be um have it renewed and a lot of people have been doing that okay now normally in nevis we have sometimes a longer wait what is the wait time if you're on nevis and you need your voters id to be renewed the renewal is done immediately you step into the office within five ten minutes your card is ready the the slowdown if there is one is if you meet other people there in line being serviced by our customer um, service representatives that is the only hold up but the cards are instantaneously renewed and we've had people who have come and have been pleasantly surprised at how quickly they get their cards um, they thought there was a long wait there is no long wait you come you get your picture taken all we ask is that you come properly attired to get your picture taken and that will be done immediately both in St. Kitts and in Nevis. The, on election day, normally persons canvas for their political parties and so on, but there is a stipulation with regards to um, in the vicinity of the polling booth that people can or cannot do that? There is a sterile area, yes. I think it's 200 yards. I, I didn't look it up prior to coming on the show, but I think it is a 200-yard sterile area. Doesn't always work, because sometimes there's a roadway within that 200 yards of the of the polling station. But um, generally, people respect that. Mm -hmm. And so you're encouraging folks. There, there is um, normally in the polling booth representatives of perhaps candidates who are allowed yes there is an agent that is the way the law describes it an agent per candidate at all times within the polling station but those persons are also not to be campaigning no they're not supposed to be campaigning they're supposed to observe they're supposed to to question anything that they see that they don't quite understand 
they are not supposed to be disruptive and and interestingly when i guess when you're spending eight nine hours with the same people you find a way to get along generally the people tend to get along um you had mentioned earlier that the new list or the, the, the register that is going to be coming out, when are we expecting that? Um, well, it has to be out to support the nomination process. So by Monday the latest, but we are looking at an earlier date. M Monday meaning the 26th? Monday meaning the 25th. The 25th. Um, and you had mentioned that you are anticipating a list which might be approximately 50,000? Thereabouts. Okay. Is that significantly different from the number of 2020? Because we had an election in 2020. Is that significantly different? I, I'm, I don't expect you maybe to have the exact number, but um, can you say, for instance, maybe the last 2020 list was what, roughly? The 2020 list was in the region of 45, 46,000. This one is in the region of 50. Okay. Another important thing for us to look at at this time, the 2020 election did not um, have the overseas voters in en masse because the, the boundaries were closed at that time due to COVID. The there was a lot of discussion preceding that about the overseas voters. I think um, a bill might have been, it, it wasn't passed, but I think it was um, laid in Parliament as to the overseas vote and whether or not um, changing the law and stuff like that by the next election they'll be able to vote. Now, as far as we know, for this election, all of the persons who were eligible in 2020 and for reasons which are stipulated let's say in the you know normal operational reasons like um, they moved or somebody objected to their names and so on and so forth but as far as we know the overseas voters can vote i will give you the answer that the law allows me to give mm -hmm. on my register on the register of voters there are no overseas voters everybody has a local address so there are no overseas voters that is a construct that is foreign to yes. the voters list yes however there is a provision in the law for domicile domicile in and of itself suggests that you are not resident ordinarily resident in the country if you go through the domicile um, window as opposed to the ordinary resident window the end result is the same that you are on the register with a local address with a local address mm -hmm. yes and and so all those persons regardless to where they may be domiciled at current they are eligible to vote they are eligible to vote they were eligible last time too and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason it is is as almost as 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 good you can use an example and say well if you were um in nevis and the weather was bad on election day but you're a domicile or regi uh, registered let's say in sandy point and the boat wasn't running for some reason you couldn't get to sandy point <laughs> to vote on that given day. it doesn't mean that you can't vote the next time it does There's mean not, nothing has changed well well i need to clarify that <coughs> the law says if you did not vote for two consecutive elections then you lose the right to vote oh really yes it does if you did not vote for two consecutive, consecutive elections, elections then you lose the right you to shall vote. be deregistered but if you're not deregistered you are you eligible, are, you're to, eligible vote. to vote because i i was just going to ask so then if i checked and i realized for two the two last elections i did not vote 
then I can't vote. But if somebody didn't deregister me, then I can vote. Well, no. Let me, it's let me not, take this. It's not left to somebody. Okay. Let me, good evening. Thank you for holding. Hi, good evening. Barely a tip with you, sir. If somebody no vote with the pen, because they no choose not to vote with the pen, you want to tell me they no lose? I am not telling you anything, caller. The legislation is... The legislation is... Let's show me the legislation. Put it up on Facebook and let me see it. I'll bring it by the restaurant and show me. No, I will be coming to your restaurant. I will put it up on the website. But put it up and let me see. Okay. And then you will believe? (laughs) You know, that, that was very interesting, Mr. Bailey, because... And that is why I... One of the reasons why... I, I like to do what we're doing now. To get the persons who know mm-hmm. what the rules are and the, the guidelines and the laws. Because oftentimes we um, have certain perceptions and that is what we go along with. But for the persons who really truly want to know and to be informed because they would like to follow the, the procedures because a lot of the times I have found in life a lot of confusion is because people honestly don't know. I agree. And and, and, and sometimes that's why I ask sometimes very simple questions and sometimes people get upset with me because I ask very simple questions. Because if you don't know you don't know. And that can cause, you know And that is one of the reasons why I took the time after I was appointed to do those educational um, articles in the newspaper week after week after week. I did almost two years worth of explaining the legislation. The, that's the, the, the other very important um, point I, I want to, to bring out is that you also earlier had mentioned, and I made a note of it, that if you registered in May and there were no objections, etc., to your registration, you're properly registered, is that correct? Yes, sir. That's me. That's me. Okay. Somebody's going to ask, well, what if I registered in June? Too late. It's too late. So, according to the law, if I or someone registered in June, they can reasonably expect, reasonably expect, reasonably expect it, that they will not be eligible to vote in this election of August 5th. It's more than an expectation. They will not be able, eligible to vote in the election of August the 5th. I, I wanted you to make that clear because I am almost sure and then when you're gone, Mr. Bailey, you have a panel that will come in and we'll be discussing these things a little further. I'm almost sure that there are folks who are th- out there who registered in June or maybe even July mm-hmm. and perhaps think or maybe told or might be given certain impression that um, somebody didn't want me to vote or they were against me or something because I registered. Yes. So why wouldn't the persons who registered in June or July can you take a moment and explain why they would not be able to vote in the August 5th election? He who registers between the first and the last day of any month would be published on a list that is due out by the 15th of the month following. So you registered in June. By the 15th of July, your name appears in the public. The public has a period of time to object to say, this person is not a fit and proper person to be on the register. They then make an objection. They have a certain time period in which to make the objection. After that, there is another time period set aside where the objection is heard. The person must get notice and have time to prepare. After that period, the next month, is upon us. So June, registered in June, July has taken up that period of publication and objection. Um, August is when 
the register is revised but the legislation says after the 15th of August and before the last day of the month so between after the 15th the second half of the month two months down is when you become eligible to vote so June persons would not have been processed before the 15th of August the election is 10 days before the 15th so therefore they would not be on the revised register and would not be eligible to vote July will go into September there's always always a two month period so I think that basically that is clear do you know though whether or not there are persons who have that expectation yes people do and people come and ask if I register now would I be able to vote and we said to them no you would not be able to vote in this upcoming election but we encourage them to register to vote anyhow some people leave some people without registering some people do you think based on even before you uh, were the supervisor of election you think that this particular area that we are discussing is sometimes a source of contention and confusion why we, we, we sometimes have some people say that you know maybe the electoral office or somebody is against me and so on and so forth because people either deliberately do it or some people don't understand it was it is and I suspect for as long as the legislation remains the same it always will be in some jurisdictions there's no such thing you register and you go to vote immediately Canada is an example of that um, you register today you are basically go to vote tomorrow we have this period of, of public inspection and public participation that some jurisdictions do not have uh, let me take this good evening thank you for holding good evening thank you for holding hey yes um by the way uh, we've got a few more minutes with the supervisor of election mr elvin bailey you have a question or comment four six nine one six one six and or one seven zero zero um you you had mentioned earlier also that the nomination day is 26 july yes for the persons who do not get it what is what does it entail that is the persons who are going to be putting themselves up to to run mm -hmm. um before you you go into that and describing it and how it what will take place how many parties do uh, let, let me let me back up and ask do they register as parties to run in the election or just as candidates they register as candidates but having registered as candidates there's a form from the office where they can agree in writing signed by the secretary of the party that they will contest as a group and then they become a party okay so with that um, definition, how many parties on Nevis are contesting the, the elections? Um, Just hold. Let me let me take this, and then you can answer afterwards. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Good evening, Mr. Robert, and to the gentleman there. Let me ask the gentleman, um, Mr. Bailey. Yes. Is any business going on at the court? First of all, will you hear? The objection hearing, where, where that does be heard? The objection hearings are held in different places in each constituency. And the person who is so affected would get a notice delivered by a bailiff that an objection has been made to your registration and you are required to attend a hearing at such and such a place at such and such a time. So I can't tell you it will be here or there. The individual notice is sent to the person. Oh, okay. I was wondering if it's in the courthouse. No, 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 no. It's not in the courthouse. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right, You're thank welcome. you. Now, Mr. Bailey, to the, to the question of how many parties do we have 
or, or do you have to wait until nomination day for that? Or do you know at well? Um, do you know at this time how many parties we have on Nevis contesting the election? I have to be careful how I answer that. <laughs> I have to be very, very, very but, but careful. But do that, yeah. Um, we do not have registration of political parties within the electoral system. Mm -hmm. We have individuals who register, um, who are nominated, who agree to contest the elections, who then agree to contest the elections as a group. There are some historical groups called political parties. There are some other persons who have some come together who have not been on the horizon to have contested an election before. But they have called themselves by a certain name and have indicated an interest in candidacy. That will not come to fruition until after nomination when they will then sign that declaration that we are contesting as a party called whatever. Now it's interesting you ask that question because um, there is a group that has come forward in Nevis. In addition to the historical group. In addition to the historical group. It's not the first time other groups have come forward. Most yeah, of them because have. I have a member of one of those of, of another group, so we'll I, I'll ask him directly. Okay. But yes, go ahead. Most of them have faded away. Mm -hmm. In the other side of the federation, there are at least two other sets of people who have indicated an interest in contesting the election as a group. This election. This election. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And there is always the opportunity for an individual to contest as an individual, independent candidate, unassociated with any party, have their own platform, have their own views, have their own manifesto, who, have, who decide to contest. Last election, we had one person. That person has the same rights as a candidate as a party of one as those who are party of eight or nine or ten or three. Oh, I see. So so when in in when they contest as an individual or independent, they can also under the law be described as a group such as the historical ones. A group of one, yes. A group of one. Yes. Okay, because I also have coming on next someone who contested as a group of one. Yes. Right. So that you see this is good education. So we will not know officially until after nomination day how many groups per se we will have contesting on both Simkits and Nevis. And that is one of the reasons why, uh, Mr Herbert, the there is always an intensity towards the end to get the ballots prepared because we don't know and even having been nominated you can drop out after after well before three days have passed mm -hmm. so we still have to wait nomination is on the 26th we have to wait 27th 28th 29th 30th then it becomes sealed so that 26th in very different ways is a very important day, nomination day. It is a very important Because that's day. when we know who is serious and who is not. Well, yes, that is when we know who is serious <laughs> and who is not. But that will be confirmed yes. three days later. Because I recall yes. in my life, there was a candidate in Nevis long ago who was duly nominated and then withdrew their nomination. Mm -hmm. And uh, within that three days. Within three but what days. if you don't withdraw then you're Within candidate. that three days. Then you're a candidate. Then you're a candidate. And um, if you unofficially withdraw, your name will still appear. What do you mean by unofficially withdraw? Meaning that they didn't inform you. The name will still appear. The ne right, the name will still appear. And uh, on election night, for instance, the names will be called. The names will be called. Whether they get... I think I had made a note um, 
last week when Edric made a statement because it was unique. So even if they get not, the names will be called. Yes. And alongside it, it will say not. Zero. Oh, zero. Okay. Because he said not. I wonder what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So not <laughs> We gotta get a light moment in, you know. I every, agree. Every now and then. So that that is nomination day and election day. Now, let me ask this. Obviously, as the process goes on, any process, people have questions and queries and so on and so forth. Have would you say that your office have been cooperated cooperating with all groups? organization who show an intent whether to to um to vote to to participate as a candidate or of that nature well what do you mean by cooperating well because people always sometimes say that the electoral office is not assisting me or they're not um they've been unfair to me as as opposed to giving other persons you know and so on well, let me put it this way. I, I told somebody the other day, it is not my responsibility to hold your hand and lead you through to the polls to becoming a member of parliament. You have a responsibility to educate yourself. The legislation is there. Get a copy of the legislation. Educate yourself. Arm yourself with the knowledge. I pointed them to where the legislation is. It is actually on that website that I mentioned earlier, and let me mention it again. It's www.legal.gov.kn, and the legislation is the St. Christopher and the Nevis National Assembly Act, Chapter 2.01. Familiarize yourself. If you have a difficulty understanding a portion of the legislation, then I may be able to assist. I may be refer you to a lawyer because I am not quite versed in legalese but I am I don't really have the time and everybody is coming now that the election is in the air to want to have the individual time but I have a million things to do to get the stage ready for the election and I really wouldn't have the time to give everybody equal opportunity equal time in in educating them and I, I said to the person who was asking I said but you know I have covered this thing in, in the writings the information information is there in the archives of the newspapers the information is there on the website some of it is actually on the website some of the writings go familiarize yourself with what is required of you as a candidate you have a question ask the question in terms of what does this mean but don't come to ask me what should I do come and say to me what does this mean what does that mean but I, I really I am hard pressed to afford everybody who wants an answer along those lines to give them an answer here's what I will term as as we are winding down, wrapping up, maybe the most important question that I have had, and I left it to the last, almost. Election night. Counting of the ballots and the results. I'll, I'll leave the question as open as that so that you can tell us, explain. Every vote will be counted. Every valid vote will be counted. Every invalid vote will be rejected. But I think the question you're asking is about timelines. Timelines. Well, we still do it by hand. We don't have machines. Some constituencies will of necessity be late. Constituency number eight in Sinkis, for instance, is showing a population of over 7,000. Um, constituency number 9 in Nevis is showing a population of 6,000. Constituency number 11 in Nevis is showing a population of less than 2,000. Some will be early, 
some will be late. What we have done to speed it up, according to the legislation and all of the political parties that were that are historically there uh, and uh, have agreed that there there would be, and as I said, it's a law by law, an additional person can be counting ballots. We did it in the by election. Some people were not quite happy, but we did it in the by election, and so the results came in basically in half the time because the presiding officer who was so assigned and uh, the law says a designated presiding officer can assist the returning officer in the duties of the returning officer so you can have we can have two persons counting but it still takes time because each ballot has to be inspected and shown and in those instances where there are more than two candidates each one the agent of each one has to be shown and in some cases where there is it's not a perfect vote it has to be discussed and a decision has to be made so it takes time I am hoping quite honestly to have cameras capture the process because that is the only process that is allowable to be captured that is not yet captured and I think when people see and understand what goes on in a count, then they will come to understand and help with the advocacy to have the ballots counted where they are cast. That has been put forward and it has not flown. So in essence, the, the, the explanation of why it takes so long or, or, or the period of time that it normally takes is because of the stipulations that one must follow. Yes. And uh, let me ask you this. Nonetheless, notwithstanding that, there can be uh, there can be improvements if some of the recommendations that are proffered so that it can speed up are taken on board. Yes, definitely. And the, the recommendation, the chief recommendation that has come out time and time and time again is to count the ballots where they are cast. Everything is there. An agent for each candidate is there. A presiding officer is there. It can be counted. It can be separated. It must eventually be counted by the returning officer who is the... the, the um, certified officer to give the final count but yes you can have a counting done at the polling station except that the law does not allow it so that um, that is a recommendation you just said but what happens now all of the the ballots are taken to a particular all of the ballots will go to a central place to be counted mm -hmm. and the, the they will be counted by the returning officer for that respective place with the assistance of a designated presiding officer yes mm -hmm. okay um so in the elections that you supervised mm -hmm. when we had a long wait it was due to what um it was due in part to that it was due in part to the fact that even though the polls close at 6 o'clock, people are still voting. Last elections, people were voting all till 8 o'clock in the night because the lines were that long. So people were voting until 8 o'clock. We have... People voting until 8 o'clock. Before you go off of that, explain because some people wouldn't get it that because they said that voting stops at 6. But you said some people were voting until 8 o'clock. Why? No. The polls close at 6. Mm -hmm. The law says everybody, anybody who is in line at 6 o'clock waiting to vote must be allowed to vote. And that is so that if, if at 6 o'clock 50 persons are in line at, at a particular occasion, uh, location, they must be allowed to vote. They must be allowed to vote. And it may take up till 7 and up till 8. And that, that is, is correct. And that's the reason why that may go on until 8 o'clock. And the then there is the two-hour period allowed for collections. Because 
you have in some instances you have a widespread number eight again is from Kayon to St. Peter's Kidstoddart, Connery and all those places are included so that's, that's a huge geographical spread Nevis 11 uh, is a huge geographical spread so it takes time to collect we do not we cannot collect until everybody has voted and the ballot box has been closed off and the paperwork is done so we have that portion to deal with then we have the logistics of transportation to deal with and then when everything is gathered together then the process starts sometimes that process does not start until 10 11 o'clock in the evening but we are working to see how early we can get it started, right? Yes, and how we are we working to see how early we can get it started. We are trying our best to be more efficient at what we did. Last last elections, every election, you you know, you learn something. How could I have done it better? Mm -hmm. And um, last elections, we made some errors, in particular, in the transportation aspect. That was not as smooth as it should have been. Transportation of the votes to the central place for counting. Um, I'm working on that this, this time to make it better. I have no control over when the voting actually stops because that depends on how the people line up during the day. Um, we have some control over the speed of counting by assigning two persons to count as opposed to one. So we are hoping that we would have it in earlier. But as I said to somebody, don't you just love the, the, the suspense and then the following day you get a holiday you don't have to go to work. Except that the following day this is a Saturday. And what did they tell you? They didn't answer. They didn't answer. I was trying to have a light moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a um, couple of things to uh, re-emphasize. Um, if you're a registered voter, it is important to check the register. Correct. Where are they located? Uh, across the islands? The register would be put up in um, conspicuous places in each polling division of each constituency. But th that list is not yet fully ready until mm -hmm. perhaps on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So sometime on the weekend. Sometime and and it's important to check... It's important to, to see check. if your n n name is there. And on the website. And on the website. And if it's not, and it should be there, you can make Come an inquiry. Yes. At, mm -hmm. um, if you do not have your voter's ID, you can you misplace it, you can't locate it, do what? You can still vote with any other form of picture ID. And if you have your voter's ID and you realize it is expired? Come to the office and get it renewed. And you don't, and uh, you can get it renewed in quick time. Immediately. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to be at this point in time? Do you know if you're going to be doing extended hours? You mean at the office? At the office. On voting day, we always open early. And and um, you on voting day? Oh, you open. You open early. On voting day yes. and all day, so people can and all day mm -hmm, people can come there. Okay, uh, Mr. Bailey, I think that that is my lot. I've got some other folks, including. Um, I wanted to say one final yes. thing, sir. I want to encourage the public stop agitating and become involved in advocacy for change. You know what you don't like. You know what you'd like to see. Because when I was involved in the electoral reform consultative um, discussions, people told us what they would like to see in the, in the electoral system. I need people to advocate for this rather than become agitators, just agitating with a lot of angst. So that the changes that we require, for instance, the counting at the polling station where the votes are cast, that is a simple matter. So I, I'd like people, as they go through the process, to begin the process of advocating for change. Maybe they can agitate for change too, but I think agitation has a little more concept of violence, and we, we want to avoid that. Just 
advocate for change so that we could have a better system going forward. And finally, I want to thank you, sir, for having me here to, to share this information. And I cannot leave unless I say thanks to the people, again, who have been praying for me and praying with me and praying over me. And tomorrow, I will be making a statement on television about a few things that we have covered here tonight. So I want the public to stay tuned. Okay, I know somebody would have done this. Don't go yet, Mr. Bailey. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Well, well, good evening. Thank you for taking my call. Good evening, Mr. Bailey. Good evening. I have a quick question for clarification. Yes. Um, if one cannot find their voter's card, they can come into the office and get one reissued immediately? Yes, especially if it's expired. Okay. But that does not mean if you did not have a voter's card to begin with, you cannot get one immediately. If you don't have a, did not have a voter's card, then you were not registered. Okay. Uh, that, I wanted that clarified. So it's only in the case of if you already had a card and could not find it or it's expired or whatever, you can get that yes. rectified immediately. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. That sounds interesting. If you can't find your voter's card but it is not expired you can you come want, you can come you can come but what People happens if you get coming. a new one and then you find the old one and that the, the old one is also it's still one picture okay <laughs> one vote <laughs> good evening thank you for holding good evening one last question to mr bailey i want to know what the problem was with mr joseph labor if you can please explain it to me I don't know what the problem was. He, he was a member of the commission. He's no longer a member of the commission. That's about all I can tell you. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Bailey, again, thank you very much. You've always, um, you know, answer our call and to help to disseminate information. Um, I sure I'm almost sure it'll be necessary because you can't explain yourself away enough. And um, please stand by so that between now and then we can also talk again. <laughs> and we wish you. And I'm you not going to promise that. <laughs> you, we, well, we only call when because you see what we try to do is help. Yes. And so if there is a genuine concern that we think can help make things easier. And that's why I, I got you here at the start of this thing because I, I, I've been in this thing a while and I know people say a lot of things. And sometimes it's because they don't know or they don't understand. And there are agents and people out there who deliberately mm -hmm. um, spread and put certain things in place. But I have also learned, and I keep telling people all the time, the public ain't stop it. When people get the information from the relevant authorities, especially when they're very credible. They're very appreciative of it, and I'm sure that this audience is. Yes, sir. I, I, I attended a conference recently by Zoom, and they were talking about misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. Mm -hmm. And we have a mix of all of that right yes. here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Yes. But we got to keep working. We have to. Mr. Bailey, Supervisor of Election, thank you. The first segment of our program this evening. We'll be back with our second segment right after this. Windows Paradise is offering a large variety of floor and wall tiles at very competitive prices. Builders Paradise has over 2 million pieces in stock, lots of different styles to choose from. Whether you're renovating or tiling a new house, Builders Paradise has what you need. Wow! Oh, and remember, we're open all day Saturday to serve you better. This is something that you can't refuse. Visit Builders Paradise today at the C.A. Paul Saltwell Industrial Site in St. Kitts or call them at 466-4938. With all the power from the tower, this is the powerhouse of the Eastern Caribbean, VON Radio, from the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis.
back on this episode of Talk That Get Results. Our first segment of the program, the Supervisor of Election, Mr. Elvin Bailey. Our second segment will start now. Conrad Naya Leibold, good evening. Good evening, Webo, and good evening to my colleagues here around the table and to everyone tuned to the program. Webo, thanks for inviting me, and um, of course, uh, the discussion before was quite an interesting and healthy one. I look forward to continue that discussion. Webo, thank you for having me. Edric W. Stanley, good evening. Good evening, Webo, and good evening to my fellow panelists. Good evening to the people of St. Kitts and more particularly the people of Nevis, those who listen to us on the World Wide Web, throughout the Caribbean Basin, YouTube and Facebook, as the case might be. Webo, it was very interesting in listening to Mr. Bailey. And as a result, I would always say he has been a very astute manager, very well trained, and of course, he did a lot of self training to be where he is with reference to the dissemination of the information he put out based on the questions you ask. At the same time, this is a tough election for him. At the same time, we are praying for him. We are praying for him. Well, well I leave it there for now. Mr. Glendale Herbert, good evening. Good evening, Webber. It's a pleasure to be back here with you again once more. Um, it's always a good pleasure to be here. Uh, I thought the prior guest, Mr. Bailey, was quite in exemplary in his explanation. Uh, I thought he was thorough. I thought he was deliberative um, and clear to understand. I think it's a very um, important election for this federation and all eyes are going to be on the electoral office. I think he's quite aware of that and he's going about his business in a more, in a, in a really serious, serious way, it seems. Um, let me ask this. I had pointed out something earlier when uh, the supervisor was on, and it's interesting, and that's why I think it's important to ask certain questions sometimes without presuming or assuming things. I asked him how many groups will be... Edric, why you... you, you, you you wanted to say something on it? Go ahead. <laughs> you know, he was rather interested when you asked it, and then eventually he elaborated, and he actually told you there are groups, but more so individuals, who we would have assumed that they would get into the process by registering one way or the other. But he was quite deliberate in terms of defining who registers and why they register in the manner they are based on the prescribed law. But he's thorough. He was thorough. He was thorough. He also said that there have been groups registered who may have contested as one person. Do you know of any such group? Naya? Edric Stanley? And then there were some that registered as a group but exited before or stepped back. Backed out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know of any such group? No, I no, you don't. I can't recall. 
Naya, you know of any such group? That I know before such group have such intentions, but back out before. Um, no, it is not back out, sir. Well, step back. Step back, yes. <laughs> <laughs> step back before um, they had the intention <laughs> before certification but they did not register and then step back they step back before they register and then he said there will be groups that if you are nominated on the 26 he said that there are some who may exit because you can exit after three days and that way you will not be on the ballot but after three days you are signed seal but wait to see whether you will be delivered and um, however if once you're on the ballot and you you um, choose to want to exit at that time you can't you'll have to go all the way through even if you get not he to uh, I use not Edric, he said zero. Are they the same thing? Well, listen, they're interchangeable. Okay. <laughs> so. But how could a fellow get not? He has the eligibility to vote for himself. No, but in, in no, no, I'm talking about in certain areas. Yes. Well, no, I, I mean certain polling stations because yeah. you can get five in Bad Village, for instance. If let's say you're running in Saint John's. Mm -hmm. And you can get not in, in Cox. Right. So. But you can get not all over too. Unless a person is going to choose a constituency. Good. In which he's not registered yeah, to, to vote. Right. Right. Simply to run against somebody in that constituency for bad mind or whatever it is. Hence, the law doesn't give him the eligibility to vote in that constituency and consequently he can get not <laughs> he can call for the not so notwithstanding they can be used interchangeably you prefer to use not rather than zero well, well that's food for thought but I very rarely use not the last thing I told you to add three zeros the, the last thing you told me was to add three zeros right and divide by four <laughs> you got not see I'm notorious for keeping records <laughs> anyway um, Glendale Herbert, good evening. You, uh, oh, you had already. Somebody wanted to make a comment. If you, 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 Mr. Stanley, go ahead. Well, uh, what I'm trying to say is, if you have a, a, an object that is <coughs> circular and you didn't put the word to it, I don't think you're going to find your record to be quite up to date. But if you did put the the word to it as not then that is what I might have said. So if I have it written down, then you said it. But if I did not write it down, you didn't say it. I'm saying to you, I would have said zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, you know, um, so we have nomination day on the 26th. We have election day on the 5th. Um, we have in Nevis, you have the Nevis Reformation Party, you have the Concerned Citizens Movement. And uh, I, I suppose that when I asked the supervisor how many entities, he couldn't say, because he can only say from an official standpoint, and he wouldn't know for sure until nomination day. And he also had indicated in his case, I didn't know that. There seems to be two other entities other than what he called the historical ones. You have the People's Action Movement, you have the People's Labour Party. Party, you have the People's Action Movement. Do, those are the three more prominent ones at the time. Anybody knows about the others that that he might have been referring to? No. 
So, well, so do, yeah, Mr. Yes. Yeah, they, well, currently right now there's the MRM, the Mall Rest Pro. Yeah, but that's Nevis. Yes. Yes. That's Nevis. We, we I was speaking yeah. about oh. Seagate. Seagate. the MR, uh, MRM. Yeah. And what's the name of the other one that was before that that step back? Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of it. <laughs> It's, the, I think, the PDA. The PDA. The, the PDA yeah. is step back. The MRM is still moving forward? Seems that way. Okay. They've been having public meetings from what I gather. Oh, really? I see, yeah. Two public meetings thus far. I saw one in Brooklyn and one in Charleston. Okay. And what about other entities and some kids? Because we want to give everybody, you know, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. little airplay. Anybody knows of other entities, no? So the, it, it basically seems like the PLP, the PAM, and the, um, the Labour Party. Labor, yeah, they, yeah, they Singers, think it's the Labour Party. Party. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, that's interesting. Maybe somebody will um, apprise of, inform of uh, others because they had to believe that there is not going to be even an independent or somebody else. Because normally in every election you have somebody who, you know... Um, Okay, anything else we got right now? Well, uh, basically, no? the, the, is the defacing of public buildings, public property, as the case might be, by the party movers, shakers, campaigners, supporters as the case might be and I think the Nevis and Sinkis in, in Evangelical Association the Bar Association as the case might be have come forward and uh, attempting to condemn but I don't think they went far enough I think what needs to be done is to make a demand a public demand of the party operators to have them completely removed even before the elections not just to come up with the statement that these party colors have utilized public property as the case might be and they are attempting to energize their own decitation with reference to the dissatisfaction of the parties and colors with reference to the strategic places where party paint or colors as the case might be has been used and I'm saying to them to the organizations that I've mentioned just a while ago that they should make a public demand that they must be removed immediately before the, the elections are held hmm. you know uh, Weber one of the things I um, have a little I would call it uh, a soft content contention with the, this, the electoral system as it relates to the parties. Um, parties are not allowed to pick their symbols. They are given their symbols. So let's say the hat for farm or the hand for labor. You, I think they approach, when you approach them, you can't go and say, well, I'd like a telephone for my, you know, my symbol, which I think can be a little unfortunate because you're given a symbol which may not embody, embody you know, not your vision, but your, you know, the, the party attitude or whatever that is. You know, you're not. You may have an idea in your mind what you want to have your symbol as, but you can't. You're not. That's not something you can just get. Mm -hmm. They, they thrust upon you. They'll decide what they want to give you. And well, I think that that's. Well, suppose suppose two, two, two participants mm -hmm. want the same. Symbol, then that's confusion. That's confusion, yeah. And so maybe yeah. it's done that way to prevent mm -hmm. um, such confusion. Yeah. 
you know uh there, there's one thing listening to the supervisor earlier that um that kind of stay in my mind he says that campaign if if i'm not right could you just stop me he said that campaign can take place on election day did i hear that yeah i think it's 200 feet away 200 feet away <laughs> from, saying, yeah, from yeah. the polling yeah, station yeah 200 I didn't yards know that is it 200, 200 yeah, feet? I like think that. you said it. But yeah, there, there's, there's a boundary. Right. There, there's a boundary. But I didn't know that. Right, I right. thought that was supposed to be so something that was completely banned on election. So day. there's a mm -hmm. sterile zone. That's a called sterile mm -hmm. zone. Sterile zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I yeah. didn't know that at all. But I, I want to go back to the symbol. Symbolism is so important eh, because, you know, there's some symbols that are powerful symbols. You represent yeah. your message. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, the hand, a uh, clenched fist is a powerful symbol. It is. Um, you know. Everybody would want that. Yeah, yeah. you know. And the bot, you know, both of us is a hammer, you know, you know. So all of this, you know, as you know, advertising psychology in advertising, for example, how marketing is done. You know, they'll put certain products at the end of the shelves and main supermarkets, let's say, and they buy, you know, and the kids always gravitate to those things. So you know, I'm just saying, some parties suffer disadvantages in terms of symbol. Mm. That's the point I'm really trying to come. I, 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 I could understand that mm -hmm. that that perception, but also almost any symbol can be um, can be turned into something of use actually for mm -hmm. for a political party. Um, the way they turn and twist things. I mean, if if you have a, a symbol as like a shoe, a shoe, mm -hmm. then people say we can walk on them. A hammer. Then we can upon them, you know. Um, <coughs> tell me how you how, tell me how you express the bottle uh, in terms of a power symbol. The bottle. Mm -hmm. um, just <laughs> think of the importance of of the bottle in real life. Mm. A bottle in real life. That's very important. A yes. baby. A baby. In every respect, <laughs> a bottle. As simple as a bottle. These things that we drink, the whole yeah, fluid yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, can we exist without it? Or a hat and you know, a fist, clinch fist, and you know. I had yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can be shelter, shelter you from the storm and, and, and bad elements. Um, you you wear a hat, then of course you could be in some way protected from the falsified information and so forth. I suppose every symbol mm -hmm. a political party can use and um, I use it f uh, as as some strength uh, towards them. But um, I understand your concern. But now we know. It's to prevent confusion because mm -hmm. if two parties want the same symbol, I mean that's that's a serious source of contention mm. there, you know. To um, toss a coin, kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> but no, yeah. yeah. But with the supervisor of, of election, I just wanted to compliment him mm -hmm. really and truly <coughs> because I mean we, we've we've been accustomed to such um, personalities back then. I don't want to sound like I'm talking bad about anybody, but I, I think with this supervisor of election, he started out educating the public, which, which was very important. He, he, he had an exercise that ran about two years in the newspaper um, almost every week, and um, I, I thought that approach was, was so professional and so caring for those who, who, who always find themselves you know, being, being confused, because sometimes that's what the politicians do. Um, and he now can talk to the people, um, bearing in mind he have done these exercises, make these explanations, and um, make work easier for him and for the public to have, you know, a greater confidence in the process, because that's very important. We are coming from a situation where there was absolutely no confidence back then. I think since he have hit the stage, we have realized almost like a revolution in 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 the in the in, in the supervising of election which is 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 such a crucial and fundamental um part of of the whole process and i think he's been doing an absolutely good job he says he's going to make a speech tomorrow which is you know really bring in the the the, the uncertainty and, and and add some clarity and and i think he's reaching out to the very common everyday people and and in, in an attempt to make them understand the process a little more and so that we can have a free and freer election i always say even though we sometimes you know they call us the third world and 
sometimes we hear like um, we are looked down upon being such small and insignificant from a global point of view. But I think in terms of the democratic process during the election, we've been doing very well. Um, not too much confusion, not too much war. And um, the last election, I, I compliment ourselves because it went down pretty smooth enough. And um, it's not always that way in, in, in the major um, democratic uh, strongholds of the world. I mean, even today, the United States still can't settle down from the last election. And, and, and we're fine. Um, we've been doing well. We've been doing well. Mrs. Well, I, I would I would say that based on the current state of affairs, the legislation that was brought to Parliament to curtail the overseas voters from coming in has not been passed. And I'm wondering what effect that would have on the outcome of this election based on the Labour Party, you think it's Nevis Labour Party, the PLP, the PAM, the NRP and the CCM. With reference to their supporters coming in, having and having the current prime minister controlling the apparatus of government controlling aviation so it is left to be seen as to what they will attempt to evoke or if initiate with reference to the curtailment of supporters coming in and how effective it will be. I have a little more to say on that, but I'll give. Well, um, you know, <laughs> the, the COVID task force is still in place. Um, the, you know, one can make all sorts of speculations, of course, because um, you have to apply for an invi invitation or get an invitation letter from wherever you are. Um, I knew they had put on if uh, something in the, uh, I, I guess, the form, that's the online form, about a week or two ago, about questioning whether or not you're coming for election. That was added, and I understand it was deleted and brought, pulled back down. But, you know, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, which I thought that question was a very, you know, <laughs> I didn't it was put on the uh, online form. I think it was. You no, saw it? No, hold on. I, I, it was reported. Sorry, let me just put it. Oh, uh, reported. I, you, me, you, I, I didn't see it. Yeah. You didn't see it. No. You heard so. Yeah. It was reported. So, yeah, but but you see the the problem I have with that is that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. You ain't see it. People say these kind of things. You put these things out there, and it, it, that is what causes a lot of the confusion. Mm -hmm. And I normally tell people, right, there's a time and place for everything, right? Mm -hmm. So you know something is basically potentially gibberish. Mm -hmm. So we leave it by the rum shop, for instance. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because when, 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 when you say certain things from certain platforms, people give certain credence to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't want people to get that impression and that is why i ask you if you saw it no i didn't never saw right it. so let's leave it by the shop that you heard it <laughs> no i i, I mean i'm i'm well, well, you're correct i'm correct well, okay. Absolutely. Okay. this is something we heard out there sir and i heard it was brought down so i don't know how you know how true that was well you know, but i'm just going in, into the when the supervisor was here he, he, he mentioned yeah. something that he was on a um a conference the other day and they spoke about misinformation, malinformation, and all that sort of thing. And another way to put it, we, we hear about um, fake news and, and so on. You mm -hmm. know what is happening with a lot of those things, right? Yeah. It's some of us who are responsible people who peddle that as well, mm -hmm. right? That is why people will say what they want, but we try to um, don't just 
talk the talk. We try to walk the walk. It's like sometimes a lot of us say that we don't like this certain standard. And we're the pushers of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, quite interestingly, like I said, you are the government and it is left to be seen as to what policies would be implemented or rejected for the good guidance, good governance, and ultimately for the performance of the, the ruling party, having all the levers of government. But let me ask a question before you go on to that. I, uh, some, uh, somebody mentioned something about the the, the draft legislation in reference to the voters list which may have affected what we term overseas voters and the supervisor did indicate that we don't have any legal term as overseas voters but people understand what we mean when we say overseas voters what we mean is those people who are registered but don't normally live here so at election time as is on August 5th, those persons will come in and vote. What happened was, just for a backdrop of those who don't understand what we're talking about, um, it is felt that some um, parties or candidates may have an advantage, for instance, in, in those who reside in a particular area, let's say overseas. <laughs> and so there are some persons who, as you um, carry out the debate and everybody's looking for an advantage here or there <laughs> and some people were in favor of saying well you know if those groups are not able to vote then advantage party A or candidate A or B and you see what I find is interesting in that it bothers me to tell the truth because the supervisor said the objective is to get everybody who is eligible to vote not only registered but also cast a ballot to vote and that's the objective and when you're going to because you're in a particular position to use the and manipulate the system to disenfranchise persons because you feel it may not benefit you. And that's not nice. Because what you're doing, you are basically wrecking a system for your own personal gain. And the question I have, therefore, for the panel is with that discussion which went on and it didn't come to fusion, you think it will affect anybody? Perhaps those who were in favor of it? For instance, if I'm um, a voter, and I learned that Edric, who was a candidate, are you still a candidate? No. Okay, who was a candidate at some point, was trying to get my name off the list so that I don't vote. You think that will affect the way I vote? So, to put it simply, those persons who are advocating for the those groups not to be able to vote and did not succeed, will they pay a price? Well, I don't. I, I think everybody sees an area where they have a, a, an advantage or a disadvantage. You ask a pointed question: Would they pay a price? It is yet to be seen or known as to whether or not they will pay a price or suffer the consequences. Okay, well, let me ask the question this way. Do you think they will pay a price? Maybe not. Maybe not. Naya? Um, well, but you know, some people would be concerned about that because they want to see a smooth uh, 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 operation of the of, of the system some people are some people are concerned about that because there's an advantage 
to them and a disadvantage to someone else. Um, for those who was advocating that those from overseas should not be allowed to vote, and they have failed in that, um, uh, they, they would be affected, Webo, in, in a sense that they, these people who are coming to vote, um, we'd know, well, that individual did not want us to come, then I vote for that individual easy. I don't think so, Webo. They would be affected. Yes, I think they'll pay a price, Webo. They'll pay us, um, because everybody has family, eh? overseas most people do anyway and the voters here have people who, who are intending to come home and they feel if they're victimized that way I do believe that there, there's a price to be paid they would turn off some people here who are voters I really do believe that they would not give the vote to somebody who yeah. have advocate that they should not be allowed to vote yeah meaning this would be a backlash mm -hmm. and I'm not so sure that you people that you guys are correct mm. Because if you are committed... But let me ask you, you're not sure that they are correct. We have uh, uh, an actual example. A few years ago, some people's names were taken off the voters list. Some, and by the action or act, uh, activity of others, they went back on or they remained, however, whichever we want to put it. You don't think, or didn't those people pay a price? Sure, we did. So, well, that's a backdrop. That's a, an example. That's something to be guided by. Whether or not <laughs> you, 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 you know, you had instances where um, some people advocated and, and did get persons' names off the voters' list. Did they pay a price? You're saying sure. So I'm asking you now. The question I asked was, this attempt was done and it was not successful so will the persons who attempted to do it how will they explain for instance to 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 me who is the voter and when they come well i would like you to give me your support vote for me and stuff like that and then i said but then you didn't want me to vote you try to get my name off the list. So how you responded, would they not pay a price? Well, I think we are talking about apples and oranges. The so what's wrong about talking about apples and oranges? The, the scenario you just brought. Yes. They're not identical. They don't have to be identical no. for me to ask a question. I understand that. But I'm saying to you that the people who were not allowed to come are not the same thing as those whose names were taken off the list and the You know why it ended up to be apples and oranges? Because you are saying something different to me. This enfranchisement. The, this you said the people were not allowed were not allowed to come. When you're talking about at that time Which and, time? And maybe now. Which time? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. You you are talking, you say it's apples and oranges well, because yeah. I work with me. I'm talking about apples and you bring oranges. <laughs> Look, I wasn't talk, mixing up apples well, and oranges. Well, 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 let me just put it this way. Well, okay. A flight that came in late and they weren't allowed to vote simply because the time for voting. Do you agree you're saying something different to what I was well, talking listen, about? I have made the connection. No, work with me. You agree. What I was saying was, after the last election, a bill went to the House. It was not, um, I think it probably had the first reading or second reading, I'm not sure, right? But the intent was, that the it wasn't down out by right, taking off those persons, but it was making it very difficult for, for practical purposes. They were going to be off, and for different reasons, it didn't go any further. Right, and the question was against that backdrop whether or not you think that those persons who were been going to be affected 
would you know the, how would they behave? Would they, so that's different to what you're talking about. Well, you with, see difference. W- 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 right. So you. So in other words, I, you're I made a connection. You work with me. So you agree now? No. You 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 agree now that in using your um, scenario, I was not mixing up apples and oranges. I was talking apples and you brought oranges. You agree with that? No way. Well. <laughs> I'm saying to you, we're looking at the outcome. One party is attempting to humbug the other. Let me use it for the want of a better word. The outcome ultimately is what we're looking for. So if a process was designed to humbug the other party, looking at the outcome, the objective is to win, regardless to what the circumstances were, what the process was. The outcome is to win and the objective is to humbug the other par- the other party by whether they use trickery that the people can't vote even they, they came the objective again is outcome am I clear the objective is to win and if I can throw a monkey into your program, simply to deny the people who are coming in from voting, and they in fact got here late, or they didn't get here at all, as the case might be, there is no difference. Okay, let me ask you a question. When you were running, and um, you decided that you're going to they should take Naya's name off the voters list you objected to him and you did not succeed Naya remain on the voters list and then you go to Naya and ask Naya to vote for you do you think Naya likely will vote for you knowing that you attempted to take his name off the list um, unfairly? No. Hmm? No. Okay. But again, I'm telling you, the, 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 the objective uh, is to win, and whatever process is used to deny people from voting for you, I can't call it fair game. Okay, so let me ask you this now. So when the discussion was had and some persons wanted to pa- pass the law that certain persons groups name names be taken off the list or they're not allowed to vote or they made difficult it was made difficult for them but the ultimate being they were not able to vote do you think those persons thereafter will likely vote for that person or person? No. Okay. You know, a good teacher, <laughs> normally, anyway. <laughs> Again, the well, process. A, am I good or not? <laughs> Naya, well, let me go to Naya. Naya is my Ted Hobson. Naya? Yeah, that's very good. Very I, I'm, I'm, I'm very good. <laughs> you rest, you rest. <laughs> I rest my kids. <laughs> very good, my <laughs> you decide now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No, let's, let's. Um, so we don't have a lot of time left. But since we met last, we've had election date. We had nomination day. What are we expecting beginning in in terms of um, what are we expecting between now 
and election day and election night. Glendale. Well, uh, Rockers campaign, um, everybody's going to be out, all the party in the in the colors and and um, going out there and making their play uh, the play to the public. You're going to see a lot of that. Um, you know, the intensity going to ramp up. The um, you know the, f the Facebook, the social media, everything is going to ramp up ten, uh, at least six to ten falls from where we were a week ago. Um, this is when it really gets, you know, hectic. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of people have made up their minds, uh, I do think, because they're party loyalists, but I'm sure there's there's a group somewhere along the, uh, between that you can, you know, the parties them is going to be fighting over. Uh, I think that's where it's at right now. And, you know, parties who, are, who, are, who feel they have a pole position is going to try to moment, maintain the momentum, momentum and close the deal. The d this is the point. The point when you have to close the deal fast. You know, so, uh, what do you think? Yeah, it's, it's, the, the time is not very long. Um, and so, as as Glenn said, everybody's going to hit the road, and the campaign is going to be a robust one. Um, mm -hmm. Quite quite um, lively, I suppose. Um, one thing that is going to walk right through culture armor um, that probably would not affect. Um, the people in sync it's that much but I think in Nevis um, it would shut out some of the voices for a while mm -hmm. which would be very close to the date mm -hmm. I think culture armor finished around the second so during all these periods uh, I don't think people in Nevis would be that caught up in, in, in the politics and I think the, the, the island administration will have, have the advantage you know um, of, of reaching the people and so um that's uh, of interest. You know, uh, I'm not sure if that would change the result, but uh, I, I think um, the Allen administration will have that advantage of reaching the people because they're under culture armor. They can be, um, you know, highlighting their mm -hmm. messages here, there, and in every aspect of the festival um, going forward. But yes, it's, it's the life is going to be um, <coughs> the liveliness of the campaign. We're going to be feeling it at the time going forward. I think if you allow me, um, I think the calling of the election and the setting the date when it is around the festive season here advantages the, like you said, the, the governing side. The opposition side they have a hard, hard time getting their voice through in this kind of climate. I mean, everybody is fixed to the big shows, the Calypso show, the this show, the that show. The party in, in charge really has a chance to you know, f showcase the best of what they do. So, I mean, you know, that's the effect of this and it, you know. Again, and it, people are going to be distracted, of course, away from it. So I, I, I don't know if the turnout is going to be the numbers. Two years ago, if I, I want to add, the turnout was around 40, maybe 47, 48, 48 percent, somewhere there, um, for the 2020 federal here in, in Nevis. Uh, I know it's in the 40s, which is quite low, but I, I would predict it's going to be lower uh, in Nevis. That's just my prediction. The turnout in Nevis, not in Sinkets, is because of the distractions. Right. Maybe not because of the distraction. Um, it's, it's, it's a federal election. It is one of yeah. importance too. But I think uh, a few people is a bit, um, you know, that the feelings are not good because of the way, you know, this election have happened in, in a sense, you know. Um, I, I think the people have lose a bit bit of confidence in, 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 in the political, mm -hmm. not the process, but the politician themselves. Um, People are a bit vexed, annoyed. Even though the responsibility is still there and they are aware of it, I think um, less would be coming forward this time around yeah. from Nevis' point of view. And that generally favors, generally favors the incumbent. Low turnout generally favors them. High turnout favors the opposition. Generally. Incumbent. Good evening. Thank you for holding. Hello. 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 You could you listen to your phone and 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 you're on the air. Yeah, could I'm you go gonna turn my TV down. Sorry. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Could you go yes, ahead? I, I have a question. If your <coughs> your voter's ID has been expired, I understand it has to be, be renewed. What if one is an amputee and cannot get into the building? To have a photo taken. What does one do in that case? Um, well, I I would suggest to you that um, you can have someone 
um, call the electoral office tomorrow and ask the question. Okay. But uh, also, the Mr. Bailey did say if the person doesn't have the ID, as the case might be, some other form can be substituted, whether it is a driver's license, a passport, a uh, so, so security card. social security card, as the case might be, even your birth certificate can be utilized because they do have a, a an ID at the voter place. Yes, a picture ID. Okay. A picture ID, and it can be oh, the it can be supplemented by the. birth certificate yeah, but the question I'll ask uh, the point I'll put out with that though is that if you're going to say to them if they cannot go into yeah okay work with me mm -hmm. how come nobody wants me to talk every time I try to to, to say something to explain okay go ahead keep, keep, keep talking <laughs> well you got the floor you got the mic <laughs> <laughs> I, I was saying that if the person cannot get into the building to take the photo, right? And you're saying that they can use walk with um, the another form of ID and go to vote. It seems to me that they still have to go into the building. Quite so. Right? So. If you have a different ID, that wouldn't really solve that part of the problem that the person had. You agree with that? That's correct. Okay. All right, but call it as I said. Um, I, what I would suggest to you, have someone, uh, you can call, the person can call the electoral office tomorrow, explain to them what your situation is, and I'm sure they'll be able to guide you. It seems to me... got to go. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us on this episode of Thought That Get Results. This program repeats tomorrow at 10 o'clock following the VON News Minute. Join the Honorable Mark Brantley tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock for On The Mac. Thank you all again for joining us. This is your voice in the community, Thought That Get Results. You all have a wonderful evening. Of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of the